Hello everybody, welcome on back to the Star Trek Online stream. I'm here with chat as we continue on with our escapades in Star Trek Online as the Borg of the Borg Juggernaut 001. Uh, now last time we uh, we lost, well, we kind of lost an episode. We got cut off halfway into the Night of the Comet episode, so I'm going to be restarting that uh, for this episode. And before we get into it, I'm actually going to do one of the events real fast uh, to make progress towards our uh, Borg Assimilator. So we're going to pop on over to my main character, Doxasa, Loriana Zitos of the USS Bahamut Omega. Uh, so we can check out the event there, and then we'll continue on with the with the main episode. How much for the bunny in the window? <laughs> yes, for June we will be doing Pride merch on our fourth wall store. Which you can find I at Kefka Castle Stone Shop .com. Links will be in the description below for those of y'all checking us out on YouTube. Uh, but yes, let's go ahead and do this event real fast before we get into the episodes. Uh, they are we are doing the demon hunting event, which the rewards for the event will be the Hef Herald Defiler Mace. Uh, which has some powerful melee critical hits, as well as anti-proton damage. And uh, a couple of new uh, Herald weaponry, the Omnidirectional Herald Anti-Proton Beam Array and the Wide Arc Herald Anti-Proton Dual Heavy Cannons. I might use those cannons on one of my other characters, I don't know. Then again, I realize that I'm not using Herald, Herald weaponry on that one, I'm using Ba'ul. But anyway, uh, for this event campaign, we have to do one of either Herald Sphere, Gateway to Grethor, or Brotherhood of the Sword. So uh, let's pop on in here for Herald Sphere. Join this TFO. I'll show you how it rocks, how it works in the Bahamut Omega. And then we'll continue on with Night of the Comet. So this might be a slightly longer episode on YouTube, but we'll see. Actually, why don't I just join all three? Because it really doesn't matter which one we do. Yeah. Hang on just a moment. I didn't mean to click that. Alright, there we go. Brother of the Sword, Gateway to Grethor, or Herald Sphere. Which it looks like Brotherhood of the Sword anyway. Make sure I've got all my goodies on. And a wild Tortuga has appeared. Catch that Pokemon. For those of, of y'all joining us for Stream Raiders, we will be doing the Stream Raider battles at the end of each episode, so please excuse the lateness. Oh well, is that the famous Ben Duper Kefka cast that you saw? <laughs> Yo. Hey, that's the old school uh, Herald oh. ship. The There's... Iconian Heralds are bringing oh, in a skip. network of devices skip. to subjugate Kronos. Oh no, not subjugate Kronos. Do I get lucky? Yeah, I get lucky. Alright. Buffs all around! Too tired for prob proper hype at the moment. <laughs> Remember, you need to deactivate all of the devices together! Or else the network will reset them. Get blasted! You have 15 seconds to disable the other two Iconian devices simultaneously. Damn, you're loud, dude. Oh, there's the other one. The devices are resetting. Synchronize and try again. 
Don't initiate shutdowns at the same time. You have 15 seconds to disable the other two Iconian devices simultaneously. Can't shoot, but you can't see. The heralds see. are activating a new set of devices. We need to move to the next area. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Summon all my goodies, all my guys. Am I missing a summon? Or is that just me? I think that might be just me. You have 15 seconds to disable the other two Iconian devices simultaneously! Devices are resetting. Synchronize and try again. Initiate shutdowns at the same time. You have 15 seconds to disable the other two Iconian devices simultaneously. The Heralds are activating a new set of devices. Proceed to yes, that they location. Are. Blah blah blah. Bye bye. Get a mortar launch. I lit the targs up? The devices are resetting. Synchronize and try again. Initiate shutdowns at the same time. I already got the targets. You have 15 seconds to disable the other two Iconian devices simultaneously. The Heralds are activating a new set of devices. We need to move to the next area. Well, everybody's killing everything before. You have 15 seconds to disable the other two Iconian devices simultaneously. A herald leader is here. Stop it before it can break into the Great Hall. That was quick. <laughs> easy money, easy money. Somebody... Oh no, my anaphasic entity killed it. <laughs> nice. Oh, fuck you, fuck you. Easy raid, easy raid. I have all the toys. It's the Mecha Bun! <laughs> the Bun Cross. Or no, 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 no. What, what did we say? It was the, uh... Not the Mecha Bun. It was, uh... The Bundam. The Bundam. Want to know something else that was quick? What? Love how everyone's avoiding the topic. 
button up cheat zero 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 one. <laughs> Bundam wing. Holy shit, yeah, that was fast. Damn. Okay, let's go ahead and continue with the reason we are making these episodes and go back to the Red Queen. 20 minutes? Yeah, that wasn't too bad. So we are going to continue Night of the Comet. Where is it? Night of the Comet. We've determined that the Davidians are using the triolic energy of Driffin's Comet to, to ease their entry to our phase variants. That is the case with all the incidents in the neutral zone, but it's worse than that. It's possible that, given the amount of triolic and temporal energy in that comet, that the Davidians will be able to destabilize the area of space surrounding the comet enough that they will pull it and everything in it into their phase variants. In essence, they're trying to steal an entire sector. The resulting effects to the surrounding space would make the destruction of Romulus look like the popping of a party favor. The only thing we can do to stop it is destroy the comet before the Davidians can use it. It's not enough to do it in the present, because the Davidians would still have access in the 23rd century when the comet moves past Drozana Station. We have to destroy it there. You'll need your ship this time, so you can't use the Davidian portal on the station. I can help you get to the past, but you'll need to follow my instructions precisely. Good luck. Until next time. Did separate into two zip folders? Okay. Alright, we gotta go to Beppy113-2. It's redacted. Incoming hail, Captain. Do you want me to put it on the main view screen? On screen. Very few people ever get to see this system, Red Queen, and even fewer from Allied Intelligence Networks. My organization has gone to a lot of trouble to keep it off the navigational charts, and we expect it to stay that way. This star is ideal for what starship pilots call a slingshot. Section 31 uses it from time to time to deal with problems that take a more creative approach to solve. Your best chance of getting back to the point in time where you need to be is to use the star's gravity to accelerate your ship to such a high speed that you will be able to access the time continuum. I've taken liberty to have the light speed breakaway calculations added to your ship's database. You will need to hit a series of points as you move around the star. After you make your approach, you should see a navigational beacon. Aim for it, and you will have the correct trajectory for the slingshot. This is a tricky maneuver, Red Queen. If you don't he hit each point in the correct order and time, it won't work. I hope your helm officer is up to the task. One more thing before you start. I also added a hollow emitter to your vessel. You will appear to be a Klingon D7 with the appropriate access codes for the time period, but still have access to all of the 25th century firepower you will need to deal with the comet. Don't alter the timeline any more than you have to. Destroy the comet and stop the Davidians. But other than that, try to stay out of trouble. I'd wish you luck, but I have a feeling you wouldn't think I was being sincere. We're ready to engage the holometer and start our run around the star at your command, Captain. <laughs> now we just look like a Borg assimilated D7. <laughs> Read it. Yo, Sinful, welcome in.
Captain, based on the decay of elements in the system, we have arrived approximately 150 years in the past, somewhere around the Earth year 2265. Sir, incoming hail. It's from a Constitution-class starship, identifying itself as the USS Reuben James. Putting it on screen now. Attention, unidentified ship. I am Commodore Jacob Ross, in command of the USS Reuben James. We have been searching for a Klingon vessel reported to have attacked a colony in the Gliese system. You fit the description of the ship we are looking for. Unless you can prove you are not, we will take immediate action. I am, and thank you. Captain, the Reuben James has closed the channel. They are not responding to hails and weapons are charging. We cannot seriously damage the Commodore Ross's ship without taking da without risking damage to the timeline, but we must defend ourselves and complete our mission. Recommend we fight to disable. Or assimilate! Firepower against unprepared noobs, basically. Danny ships in range, please. We need help. I don't know what these things are, but they're all over the station. They're killing people. Please, you have to help us. Okay, I've got to adjust the volume. Holy shit balls. They're like blasting in my ear. Simulate all, all shall join the bunny. Captain, the comet approaching the station. Its triolic energy is making it easier for the Davidians to manifest. The people on that station don't have any way to fight them. We have to help or they'll all die. Captain, I'm reading multiple Davidian life signs. We will need to work quickly to clear the station of their presence. Space zombies before. <laughs> space zombies versus space ghosts. Sorry, I figure I should go ahead and fill these in while I'm at it. That would explain the repeat events if that's what they've been working on. Probably, yeah. Oh, shit, they're there.
Sir, I don't think anyone here appreciated the Davidians crashing their party. I'm detecting weapons fire, broken glass, and signs of a struggle. It's a bar fight, sir, and we'll need to quell it if we want any chance at stopping the Davidians. The Temporal Prime Directive is in effect, sir. Recommend we set all weapons to stun to minimize possible damage to the timeline. Fuck that! Assimilate them all! Hide from me. Okay, bar fight's broken up. Neural Nibble achieved. yet. Now can I do this one? Or am I missing... Oh shit, there's more over here again. What the fuck? Y'all weren't here a minute ago. Congratulations, Pat. 
in there with them. The door is barricaded, but a few hits with a phaser should take care of that. Get my people out of there! That's not what it said in the text. That's not what he said. Hey, Scout! Welcome in! Thank you for the lurk. Knock, knock! Open up the door! I'm coming in! Thanks for the help, friend. What were those things? Uh, damn spirits snuck up on me. I noticed a spike in triadic energy, and I was working to adjust the station shields to compensate. I went to fetch a hyperspeller, and I was attacked. If you help me, I can finish my repairs before the triadic energy reaches lethal levels. By the way, you can call me Scotty. What were those blasted things? I haven't seen you around here before. What ship are you assigned to? That's a funny looking uniform you've got there, friend. <laughs> What's great? <laughs> Hang on. I came here for a few days of shore leave, and the next thing you know, the <laughs> bloody blazing ghosts. <laughs> Try the energy levels arriving. We've got to do something. What's really great is that uh, the guy doing the voice acting for Scotty here is Patrick Doohan's, uh 
like grandson or son or something. Just as I suspected, the trialic energy is increasing. We'll be cooked like a haggis if we don't do something about it. There is a wee store on this station. The lass who runs it, Cassidy, said they might be getting a supply of the new quantum flux regulators. The Mark II versions. If we had one of those regulators, I could modify the flux coordinating sensors and use them to modulate the shields protecting the station. That would buy us some time. Go find Cassidy. She'll know where they are. I hate this part of the mission, but this mission is also where you're able to get one of the sexy dance emote things from one of the drinks. <laughs> Those things. They were floating, and, and one looked at me, and I, I felt so weak. And, and then it, it lifted me up, and oh, it was horrible. Work is work is done. How's the bun? <laughs> the bun is doing fine. How's the doggy? Oh, are you looking for something from the store? A quantum what? I, I, I'm sorry. I'm just too scared right now to think about selling anything. I'm closing down until I get me wits about me. Maybe it would be best if I packed up and went back to Sherman's planet. I don't know. What can I do to help? Oh, I don't know. Maybe a nerve tonic would soothe me. A nice stiff one, you know. Can you get one for me? <laughs> See if I can remember how to make this. Get you. I need a nerve tonic. A nerve tonic? Almost every culture in the galaxy has nerve tonics. Most worlds have multiple variations, and everyone thinks that the one their grandmother made is better than all the rest. Look, I tend bar at a commerce station in the middle of one of this quadrant's busiest trade routes. It's my job to be able to make anything you want, but uh, you gotta be specific. I could make you 14,647 different nerve tonics, 18,397 if you're bowling it. So, uh, what kind do you want? <laughs> Exhausted, I'm over this week by 10 hours and it's only Wednesday, I want to cry, I don't really want to cry, I can't feel emotions anymore, maybe I'm bored, oh no, I'm so sorry. Tell you what. One of the waitresses should be able to help you narrow down what kind of nerve tonic would be best. Talk to one of them, and then come back. I'm sure we can make exactly what you need. Uh, okay. Where's, where's the what's her butt? Oh, here we go. Who do you think you are? First, the lights go all strange, then these weird creatures show up, and worst of all, you're here picking fights with my best customers. Look at dear, brave, handsome Captain McQueen here. He could have been killed. You should be ashamed of yourself. How about nerve tonics? Nerve tonics? How can I think about nerve tonics when my sweet Captain McQueen is injured? Well, if you want to know about any sort of exotic beverage, go ask that drunken Scotsman. Uh, I mean, Lieutenant Commander Scott. He knows more about alcohol than anyone I've ever met. While you do that, I'm going to make my sweet prince all better. <laughs> Working that dude hard. Oh, showdowns? Combat exhaustion. Actually, while I'm thinking about it, do I have things for everyone? Let's see. Oh, forgot about this. You can use that. How about a shield and a weapon battery? How? I can take a shield, weapon battery, Shodan. Uh, let's give Shodan hypo and 
shield, battery. My tribute can take a hypo. Yeah, that should be fine. Should be just fine. Did you get the quantum flux regulator? Do you know about nerve tonics? Nerve tonics? Ah, you don't look like you need one of those. These wee beasties are troublesome, but they're not as bad as a ship full of angry romulans. Now, I've been known to enjoy an occasional nip of scotch whiskey. That's the only nerve tonic you'll ever need. Why do you need to know about them? I'm looking for a nerve tonic for Cassidy. Oh, for Cassidy. Now that makes sense. She's a bonnie lass, that Cassidy. And more than willing to spend a little time with the right Starfleet officer, if you know what I mean. But she hasn't got the stomach for fighting. Is she alright? I hate for anything to happen to her. She's shaken up, but she'll be fine. Glad to hear it. Sounds like she needs something to take a wee bit of the edge off. And that happens to be one of my specialties, along with transwarp transporter technology and warp field mechanics. Cassidy's been meeting me every evening in the bar for a spot of cheer, but I've never seen her order a nerve tonic. Perhaps if I told you what she likes, you'll be able to figure out the right mix. The bartender will help you. What does Cassidy like to drink? I've seen Cassidy order these drinks. Mulvanian brandy. Cassidy didn't like the salty taste of the Albion brandy, but she really enjoyed the fact that it was garnished with a drop of honey that floated on the top of the drink. Bah, garnish is getting in the way of a fine beverage, if you ask me. Can you imagine putting a wee piece of pineapple in a glass of 20-year-old single malt? It's preposterous. Okay, so drop of honey. I'm gonna use chat to keep keep an eye on it. I've seen Cassidy order these drinks. Uh, blood wine. The only time I saw Cassidy ordering blood wine was when she was feeling under the weather. Poor lass. She liked that it was served warm, but she hated those blasted heavy methyl mugs that Klingons use. And the potency of it was a bit much for her to handle. A girl like Cassidy needs something with a little less kick. She likes it warm. I've seen Cassidy order these drinks. Uh, Denevian mead. Zele brought Cassidy a Denevian mead a few nights ago. Ugh, terribly sweet stuff. Like drinking syrup. Cassidy didn't like the cloying sweetness, and the wee bird broke out into highs because she was allergic to the fruit garnish. I'm not ordering any of that stuff again. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. not too sweet. I've seen Cassidy order these drinks. Uh, fire wine. Cassie and I got into a drinking contest with a Klingon one night, and we ended up drinking fire wine. It's not as good as scotch, mind you, but it's better than drinking warp core coolant. <laughs> the next morning, after she picked herself up off the floor, Cassidy told me that the fire wine was so spicy that she was afraid that it had eaten a hole through her stomach. I had to send her to see Bones for a checkup. Also, she said that drinking from those shallow bowls made her feel like someone's pet targ. Okay, uh... No spice. No spice, no bowl. <laughs> I've seen Cassidy order these drinks. Uh, martini. Martinis aren't my cup of tea, as it were. But Cassidy seems to like them. She appreciates that a martini should be served as cold as possible. But since she nurses her drinks, the cold tends to dissipate, and she doesn't get the full effect. She's quite fond of those fancy stemmed glasses, though. Stem glass... I've seen Cassidy order these drinks. Uh, Sumerian Sunset? Cassidy really likes her Sumerian Sunsets, mostly because of the sour taste. She hates that the drink is so weak, and has been trying to convince the bartender to add garnish to it, to make the happy feeling last longer. But he won't, because then it wouldn't be a Sumerian Sunset. Me? I say a drink is a drink. If the lady wants a garnish, give her one. Okay, uh, sour. I've seen Cassidy order these drinks. And Skagarian whiskey. Cassidy really likes the little pick-me-up of a drop of Skagarian whiskey. But she doesn't like the wee shot glasses or the silly paper umbrellas. Who ever heard of putting a wee paper umbrella in a glass of whiskey? It's sacrilege. If I ever go to Skagara, I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. 
Hey, Helen Nelly, welcome in. Hey, thank you for the hydrate. How are you doing today? Welcome back. All right. Um, whiskey. I think that. I think I've seen Cassidy one of these drinks. Okay. Let's go. Let's go try to make this nerve tonic for her. So interesting fact about Star Trek Online, you can unlock, well, you don't really unlock it, but there's there's a secret emote that you don't normally have, and it's based on making these uh, nerve tonics. Now most of them, they'll do things like do the, the sleep standing up emote, there's another one where you do various different emotes, but like the best one, the one that I'm fixing to make, if you drink it, You'll you'll do the sexy Orion dance, and that's the only way you can do that emote is by using that uh, drinking that drink. <laughs> so on my main, I've got like a stack of like twenty of them. <laughs> what can I get you? I need a drink. I'll need some more details before I can make a drink for you. If you need help figuring out what combination of ingredients you want. You should talk to one of the waitresses. That's what they're here for, after all. So, do you want it to be hot or cold? Hot. What kind of flavor profile are you looking for? Sour. How strong do you want this drink to be? A little pick-me-up should do it. How would you like this drink to be served? In a stem glass. And last but certainly not least, what kind of garnish would you like? A drop of honey. This should be all the info I need. I'll put the drink on the bar when I'm done. I'll put the bill on your tab. I've been through a very challenging one today, both physically and emotionally exhausted. Getting some relax now before bed. I'm so sorry. Well, well, thank you for coming in here and relaxing with us. I hope your evening goes well. Thank you, sir. Right, pick up glass. Yeah, this is the right one. So just to just to show you what it does, I'm gonna go ahead and drink this one. Use. And then you get the sexy dance. <laughs> this is the only way to get this emote is by is with that nerve tonic. And you can come back here and you can stack that as many times as you want. Let me see if I can still give it to her before it disappears. Just take a sip. Do you have a drink for me? Try this. Oh, I love warm drinks. They're so relaxing. Glad you find the temperature pleasant. Oh, there's a lovely sour note to this drink. I feel so refreshed. It's going somewhat better than earlier today, so that's a start. Well, good. I'm glad. I thought this would be right for you. Oh, there's just enough oomph to this drink to make it really stick with ya. I like that. You look like you could use a little pick-me-up. Oh, I love the style of this glass. It accentuates the flavor of the ingredients. Aesthetics are important. The right glass makes the right drink even better. Honey! No, not you. <laughs> the drink. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that little bit of sweetness is just perfect. It adds the most delightful note to each sip. <laughs> See, these used to not be voiced. <laughs> that little addition. <laughs> I'm doing well, thank you. I'm glad even the last drop of this drink is making you happy. Ah, that is marvelous. Oh, I'm feeling much better now, thank you. Alrighty, what tool was it you needed? Oh, a quantum flux regulator mark two. I have one of those right here. Please take it as a thank you. Cheers. <laughs> I'm still dancing. <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still fucking dancing. <laughs> the board queen is drunk. <laughs>
the right tool for the right job. I'll just like making the adjustments, but I don't know if I've got enough time. You can't change the laws of physics. The trialic energy levels keep rising, and since they show, the plastic comet is to blame. Modulating the shields is not going to be enough. Something needs to be done about that comet if we're going to live to see the morning. Captain, the station is safe for now, but we still need to deal with the comet in orbit. If the Davidians are able to harness its energy, then we'll be able to pull most of this sector into their phase variants. Past, present, it will all be disrupted. This is as close as the comet's trajectory will take it to Drozana Station, Captain. We need to destroy the comet while we still have time. Sir, a group of Klingon vessels have entered the system. The lead ship is hailing us, sir. Putting it on screen now. Ah, a ship from the House of Duras! I am Captain Bavat, son of Warat, and leader of my house. My brother died due to Duras' treachery. I will avenge his death with the destruction of a hundred Duras ships. Prepare to die! Captain, we can't afford to change the course of events any more than they have already been al altered already, and we know that Captain Bavat survives this day. We'll need to attempt to disable his forces. He'll be, call he'll be calling for reinforcements. We need to destroy the comet and return to our time before we're overwhelmed. Bring in more ships from the future. The board don't care.
Arathor. Helm, ramming speed. Captain Kovac shoots to glow. Can't risk firing out without further damage. ship went. I disabled Cleons. That did it, Captain. The remaining comet debris is too small to be a threat. Now we just need to find a way to... One moment, sir. I'm detecting a temporal anomaly. It's forming inside the Bork Juggernaut 001. If you are receiving this message, then you and your crew have completed your mission. Driffin's comet is destroyed, and the Davidians are no longer a threat to the Federation. You've done well. And, to prove that I'm not the immoral monster that some make me out to be, I'm going to help you. When you last docked at Deep Space K-7, I had some modifications made to your vessel. One of those is the addition of a Borg Temporal Node salvaged from a cube in the Batron Cluster. It's set to return you to our time. Congratulations on a job well done. Drake out. <laughs> Very nice. Excellent work. I knew I could count on you. The disappearance of Driffin's Comet in the 23rd century will be a scientific curiosity. I have taken steps to suppress information that might reveal our involvement, and I trust that you and your crew will refrain from telling stories about what happened here. After all, we're getting along so well. One thing I hope you'll take away from all this is that any opinion you may have of the immorality of so-called rogue elements like Section 31 is a bit naive. Contrary to popular opinion among some Starfleet officers, we do not spend our days plotting evil and committing random acts of villainy like characters in a bad hollow novel. We protect the Federation from threats. Thanks to you, the Davidians are no longer on that list. If you think about it, everything we do is to preserve the freedoms you so enjoy. You should be grateful. Drake out. Haha, <laughs> nice. And then we get uh, Type 3... Uh, we could choose between a Type 3 Federation Phaser, Type 2 Phaser, or a Klingon Disruptor, all from that time era. Until next time. <laughs> Alright. So that is it for the Davidian story arc. Next, when we come back, we will continue with the... Let's see. I think the next thing to do would be the... The Breen story arc. So we'll continue with the Breen story arc. And... Uh, 
continue on from there with these little side missions before we get into the main deal. And these missions will lead up into the next part of the uh, main mission. So it'll be the Breen, and then the Dominion arc, uh, Deep Space Nine arc, and then... Uh, on to the Borg. So that is going to be it for this episode, everyone. Twitch, stick around. We will continue after this short break. But for those of y'all watching on YouTube, thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. Be sure to check me out on Twitter at Lord Castlestone and also uh, Blue Sky Social at KefkaCastlestone.bsky.social as well as check out the Bunny Army merch in the description below. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye!